recap some of the outside passing that we've been working the last couple of weeks and then work on some north south tops so finishing from north south so let's say luke is on his back so uh, two hands are on the shin uh, what we want to do is if i want to pass to i want to create an angle if i want to pass to my left side i'm going to use my left hand to pull and my right hand pushes so we can pull hand and a push hand so if i want to move to this side i pull with my left hand and i push with my right hand once we come into this position, I'm going to take like an extra step to get my foot past the shoulder and then the race then is basically for me to get my hand and elbow on his hip and my head then connects it to his stomach. Really important detail is you want to keep your elbow on the floor or as close to the floor as possible. If your elbow is um, kind of like say flared uh, and it's not like kind of connected to the floor, low to the floor, it's just easier for Luke to bring his knee inside and get his guard back here. All right, so that's the first detail. So. Push hand, pull hand, we take a second step. Hand on the hip, elbow goes to the hip and we try to drop our elbow on the floor. So what Luke wants to do in this position as well, if he can't get his uh, knee free, he's gonna frame on me and then just move, move his head and move his hips away, here. So how we stop this is we get a grip over the back, uh, say with a flat hand, and I'm gonna get my elbow on his head and tuck his chin to his chest. Now if Luke tries to move, this is a lot harder, I can stay connected to it. So to finish the pass, we run over to the, the side of the shoulder to top the mat, and then we bring our head on the opposite side. So we'll do it one last time. So right hand pushes, left hand pulls, take an extra step, so foot passes the shoulder, hand and elbow on the hip, drop the elbow to the floor, forehead goes on the chest. We grip the back as deep as we can, and if I can, I put my elbow on his head and tuck his chin to his chest. So if he tries to move now, it's a lot harder. So I run over to the side of the shoulders off the mat, Drop my weight onto that shoulder and the head goes on to the opposite hip. Alright, so 3, 2, 1. Let's say we, we create the angle, so push hand, pull hand, take an extra step. So we're trying to get the foot past the line of the shoulder, elbow and hand drops to the hip, forehead goes into the sternum and we're trying to reach this grip here, we're trying to tuck the head, all right, if we can. A lot of time, if Luke kind of sees this coming or he's able to prevent it, when I take this step, he frames on my shoulders here to make it hard for me to get that grip with my left hand. So you see, whichever way it feels comfortable for you, right? So if, I, if I'm trying to get the, the grip, you can see that he's moving himself away, he's on his side, and I just find I'm not able to break these frames. If you find that you're not able to Break the frames with your body weight, like the way we're doing. So we're just going left shoulder, right shoulder down. If someone's very strong and they're kind of pushing. All we're going to do is, instead of running into the frames, we're going to run away from the frames. So I run towards his legs, and I get my hip connected to uh, Luke's hip. So we don't have, like, say, upper body control, but what we do have is lower body control. So we're controlling his hips. So what I want to do is set. You can stay framing. So we're settling into this position, dropping my hip to the floor. More than likely now, Luke is going to try block the cross face. So his, his right hand's on my bicep, left hand goes across the shoulder, and then he's flaring his elbow on the opposite shoulder. So we can look to try and get our hand over, we can put our hand inside, but what we're gonna do is basically just reverse back. So I do like a hip heist, so you can frame there. So we hip heist, bump, that creates space between my hip and his um, his elbow. I pump my left, in, left hand inside, and then we get our cross face in the bump. So he's framing here, not able to break the frames. So I have the hand on the knee, I run towards the hip, I turn his hips and knees in the opposite direction. Elbow drops to the floor, hip drops to the floor on the opposite side. Luke is doing a good job of blocking the cross face. So what we do is we use our left foot to hip heist, I reverse into his hips to create space, pulling my hand inside, and we take the cross face and then roll. All right, so. so we create the angle. All right, so on the first kind of scenario, we're able to drop the hand, elbow and head to the hip and the chest, and then I'm able to get that grip over the shoulder. All right, but when we create that angle, and let's say Lucas has his frames locked out, so he's locked, he's, uh, locked out frames, I'm, I'm not giving up the grip that's on the knee, so I'm not gripping up this, or giving up this post, unless I can get the grip on the back here. So what, what you do is, when, if you're in this position, he's framing really hard, use your right hand to control, and your left hand to push his leg and his hips in the opposite direction. Here, so really focus on that, and then you can settle into side control, or if you want to go into staples, you can do that here, all right? So we just put a little bit more emphasis on that left hand. So three, two, one. So 
So create an angle, we manage to get our hand and elbow on, on the hips, we get the grip on the back this time, we're able to uh, move through the frame, so more than likely uh, Luke is going to be on his side. So this is really important, he's on his side, we always want to put weight over the far shoulder to keep him pain. Right. You're gonna, sometimes you're going to land when you have like say one hand in, one hand out. It's, e it's better for attacking and controlling when you have your, your hands on the outside. So that's, that's my hand on the inside, this is my hand, sorry, this is my hand on the inside, this is my hand on the outside. So what we do then to get the second hand on the outside is we circle over to that side. So my, my left hip crosses his right shoulder and all I do is just pummel my hand inside scoop the elbow and I can go back to the side I prefer. So this position here is really good for controlling. So what this does is, you can see I'm using like false grips keeping his elbows off the floor. So this makes it hard for Luke to turn in and build up in his elbow. So if you turn in and build up in your elbow, keep coming up, try to go turtle. Yep. And if we go back, if we keep the, sorry, we keep the false grip, if Luke tries to turn in again, he can't build up onto his elbow. So we're using the, the grips on the elbows and we're also using our body weight on his shoulder and my head on the opposite hip to keep him flat. All right, so now if Luke tries, tries to move around, try to keep your shoulders, this is fairly hard. All right, so if you control his shoulders and you control his elbows with the, the false grip, you can also use your hands to control his hips. All right, so that, that's where the problem is gonna come from, his hips and his shoulders coming up off the floor and Luke building up onto his elbow. So my weight, on his, on his upper body and me scooping the elbows off the floor is going to control say his shoulders and then my hands blocking block on his hips so if you try to move left and right try to come up try to go to the other side here allows me to keep him flat tire him out and then go into submissions so what we'll do is we just work on the control and then we finish off with the sub so just on the grips let's say that spin you on this way here if you don't mind so let's say we manage to go we get to north south keeping the elbows off the body or off the floor keeping his hips off the floor or stopping him from getting like say either side side by blocking the hips off you try to move around a little bit so you can see that like this is all well and good when he's not resisting but if he's really trying to resist and he's trying to like get to his knees so if you try to move around what we'll do is i'll take the say, knees and hips off the floor and we'll send weight over to whichever hip is off the mat so if you try to move around here where my hips and that are up if you, and then once he starts to settle then we can go back to knees on the floor so where we can block the hips but if you can reach you can also pop the hamstring block the knees so if he tries to turn his knees say towards me in whatever direction we can just kind of like just say block in here if you try to build up try move the other way this is the way it's going to kind of look in real life until he kind of settles down all right the other benefit to having this grip is once he settles uh, it's obviously really good for control, but it's really good for setting up attacks. So uh, if we just spin you around this one here just a little bit. So once he settles, all we do is basically just bring the uh, elbow across the body with the false grip, and then I can put my chest on his tricep. So we can go into our kimuras, you can go into arm bars, or whatever it might be. But a lot of time, what's going to happen is, uh, especially against someone that's good, they're going to recognize the threat. But you can see that when he's up on his side, and I'm attacking this kimura or armbar, his head's up off the mat. So I find that I'm losing the armbar or the kimura. All I basically do is with the top hand, we switch back to the north south. So we have like say a, a chain of two attacks. So again, bring the elbow across the body, chest goes to the tricep, setting up the kimura or the armbar. Maybe he's turning in where he's out, starting to lose the elbow. His head's off the mat, you can see it. All I do is just use my right hand to catch his neck and then I, I kind of rotate my hand towards the floor here. My bicep's on his neck, and then my lat is on his neck on the opposite side. So we just get into that position, and then we'll work the finish. So, three, two, one. So we'll just do the whole sequence, right? So here we work, in, we create our angle, we work around to north south, we circle, we one arm in, one arm out. The arm that's in, we circle to that side, and then we just come with our hand towards our belly or towards our training partner's elbow. If you're right handed then you're just going to circle over to your left side so you can use your right hand for sure. If you want to work on the left side then you can do that either. It's keeping the elbows off the floor so we're using false grip so we can use our hands as well on the hips and on the legs if we need to. Um, if we need to be a little bit more faster so like they say he's really really trying to get up so we really try to get up. This is where we come up on our toes and we kind of like try to Alright so if he tries to turn in this way, we circle over to the far side tries to turn in the opposite way, bring the head 
on today's side until, until we kind of get into settle a little bit. So we'll circle around there for a sec. <coughs> so what we did on our north south uh, north south setup is we used the false grip to take the elbow across the body and then take his uh, back and shoulder off the mat. So we're looking to get a figure four, look for an arm bar, or whatever it might be. But what we feel is that his head is off the floor and he's turning in towards us and we're starting to lose that elbow. So we, when he starts to turn in, all I'm basically gonna do is I'm gonna look to catch the north south, but the detail that we're gonna work with, instead of just wrapping the hand, we're gonna corkscrew the hand down so we can get more connection on the bicep on the side of his neck. So we're not just gonna go with like say a normal wrap, we're just gonna say turn or corkscrew our hand down towards the mat. We then get our lap into position head goes to the outside of the shoulder and then I'm just going to go with a, a butterfly grip. Now if you want to go with a gable grip or S grip that's up to you right. So we slide backwards, drop the shoulder into the chest and then we squeeze it, squeeze the bicep, squeeze the lap to get the finish. Alright so 3, 2, 1. Thank you. 